Welcome back everyone to Breakfast at Wolferman's Bakery. I'm your host, Francesco Bellato. I hope that everyone has enjoyed their summer so far. It's hard to believe that the school season is here and depending on where you live, it may already be in session. Well, well, that brings us to our topic today, back to school. But don't panic. We are thankfully joined by a few amazing guests who are experts in this topic. They are here to help us navigate the school season ahead a bit better and more brilliantly, I must add. So grab your morning mug, a tasty bite, and pull up a seat and help me welcome Dr. Terry Kurtzberg, author of Negotiating at Home, Essential Steps for Reaching Agreements with Your Kids. She's also a professor at Rutgers Business School and the author of four books. And joining us next is Amy Palangian. Amy is the creator of YummyToddlerFood.com and the author of Busy Little Hands, Food Play Cookbook for Kids. And we also have someone here who loves all things breakfast and brunch. That's right, the OG host of Breakfast at Wolferman's, everyone's favorite, Lucy Sommer, the merchandising manager for Wolferman's. But I'm guessing a little bit more important title these days is mom. So thanks for you. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. And thanks for all of you watching. Uh, make sure to join the conversation by adding your comments below. And um, speaking of commenting, Wolferman's is giving away something pretty cool to three winners. So stay tuned and I'll announce details near the end of today's episode. Hint, it's pretty fantastic. So welcome everyone. To get us all started, I thought we would get to know you all a little bit better. Amy, Lucy, Terry, um, with a little speed round game. We're calling it Flashback Field Trip. <laughs> That's right, we're going back in time when we were all back in school and sharing what we thought was cool. So it's easy. I'm just going to toss out a first and quick answer to you, and you'll just pull from your memories any grade or class that comes to mind. Uh, we'll keep rotation going by uh, alphabetical order, starting with Amy, then Lucy, then Terry. Everyone watching, please join along and put your answers in the comments below. So are you guys ready? Ready. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, think back to before school, when the day was getting started, in the early morning. Were you a rise and shine early bird, a slow and sleepy turtle, or hibernating as long as possible like a bear in the winter? Bird, turtle, or bear? Amy? I was always ready to go. And my kids have taken uh, they in my speed genetic because they are up at the crack on two for school. And also any other day. Uh, I'd say normally I'm a bear, but the anxiety of a first day of school would probably make me more... What was the other one? The middle one. Like kind of lazy, but I get up and going probably a little sooner than any other day. <laughs> Turtle, yeah. I Turtle, been, yep. It's on the grade too, you know. Sixth grade was a little different than ninth grade, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, Terry? Uh, I'll go. I, I would say turtle also. I definitely take those first few minutes are painful, but once you <laughs> get over the hump of just rolling out of bed, the rest is fine. Definitely. I was a turtle as well. So, all right, next question. For breakfast, what was your typical meal growing up? Sugary cereal, wakey wakey eggs and bakey, or what's breakfast? I was racing out the door to catch the school bus. <laughs> Gosh, do I even remember? Um, I think we had a lot of like frozen sausage and egg sandwiches and also special K. <laughs> I was running out the door. Maybe that proves I'm more of a bear. <laughs> I didn't have time for that. So I was getting dressed and heading out. <laughs> Ours was a bowl of cereal, but it had to be the healthy kind. We were not allowed the sugar ones. <laughs> that was fun. Thanks for playing a little speed round. I can't wait to read the comments below from everyone watching as well and, and how you answered. Um, so we're going to stay on the topic of when you were a kid for like one more second here. Um, I want to dig back a little bit longer now with our answers um, and share if all of you could share just one back to school moment that you had the opportunity to share with your family. For example, was it shopping for school clothes with your parents? Or is it a special breakfast prepared on the first day? Or were you just savoring those last few days of summer like we all are this week <laughs> um, on a special vacation? Um, Lucy, why don't you start us off with that question, with that answer? Yeah. Um, I'd say that for some reason, I think even up until, you know, I could drive, I would say drive, the drive to school with my parents was always something I looked forward to, even though it was only maybe like, I don't know, three to five minutes. We were always super close. But for me, it was that special moment of hopping in the car with mom or dad on that first day, just knowing that I'm embarking on a new year that was always really special to me. Just being able to spend those couple of minutes with them before 
I got a little nervous to get, you know, go inside was just a moment of comfort for me up until I was, I'd say probably pretty old. I mean, even honestly till college, I think those were definitely some precious moments for me to be able to, to have some one-on-one time with my parents. That's awesome. That's sweet. Amy. Um, so we, I don't remember doing anything before school, but I do remember we used to go out for ice cream after school, um, right in the beginning of the year to celebrate. And there was a place in town called Lucky Seven, which sort of everybody went and they had like chocolate covered frozen bananas and ice cream sandwiches and all the good stuff. So that stands out to me. Um, and then we, we started doing like a special breakfast for our kids now. Nice. I like the ice cream idea afterwards. Yeah. And Terry, any, any, uh, memory? So my kids like me like to plan ahead. So there is no such thing as too early to buy school supplies. And one year I took them out in June after school ended one year, they were like, can we get ready for next year? I said, sure. So we definitely beat the rush that year. I was going to say that's a very smart strategy because everything right now is sold out. It's a mess. I know. <laughs> Okay, everyone, let's come back to present day now where we're all adults again, wah, wah, you know, not, not as fun, not as exciting, <laughs> responsibility, I love that. Yeah. Um, Terry, I'm so glad you're here. I would love to talk more about your impressive book and how negotiating with kids and parenting tips work in your world. Please share with us uh, what the main difference is between negotiating with kids versus adults to start off this little conversation. It is amazing how different it is. So my co-author, Molly Kern, and I, we ended up writing this book. We both teach negotiations in business schools, and we just spent years watching all these people who they could negotiate multi-million dollar deals at work, no problem. Then they'd go home and stumble with their kids. The toddlers, the teens, they were kind of flattened by all of it and said, you know, I don't know, just do whatever you want or just resort to because I said so over and over and over again. Um, so we thought there was an opportunity to really look at this, and it really was amazing how many things are not the same. Um, some of the real differences stem from the fact that this relationship is just really different fundamentally, right? We, we allow ourselves to be much more emotional. We get much more emotion coming at us from kids. There's also a lot of repetition. They can ask the same thing over and over and over again. There's not the same start and end to a negotiation the way, the way there would be with a grown up. But we're also, we're trying to manage multiple bottom lines at all times. Like imagine that you're negotiating without, without intending to, you end up negotiating over breakfast, right? Your child asks you for a ton of chocolate chips on top of the pancake, let's say. There, there's a couple different things going on. First, there's how do I get through this moment without, you know, a total blow up and still get through breakfast effectively and get off to school? That's one. But there's also precedent, right? So if I say yes today, does that mean I have to say yes to the chocolate chips on the pancake every day going forward because what you said last time? And then there's the third big, big picture level. You are concerned about what kind of grown up they turn into. So we have all these different competing needs and competing goals that weigh in on trying to figure out any one answer in the moment. It's incredibly difficult. It's not, it's not the same story at all. Wow, that, that's a, I, I will never look at chocolate chips again. There's so much weight. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is the most common mistake then that parents make when they are negotiating with their kids? Is, is, is the tone in the parent's voice uh, very important when it comes to that, Ver you know, speaking to what you were saying about the different fundamental, you know, backdrop that you're dealing with. Um, what's a common mistake and how can they prevent that? Yeah, the, the tone can be important. I think, I think an even bigger mistake is staying too focused on your own side and not thinking through things from your child's side. So a lot of times we assume that we understand based on the question or the conversation I mean, we know these little people really well, right? We assume we understand the motivations and what they're really hoping for, but you don't know everything until you ask them. So I'll give you an example of this. My uh, younger child, who's now um, 13, when he was at that age where he was just about to outgrow the booster seat in the car, he started complaining like crazy and saying, I don't want this anymore. I don't want to sit in this thing. And I thought it was because he was a little on the small side and some of her friend, his friends were out of them already. And so he just didn't want to deal with it. And I said, this is a safety issue. This is non-negotiable. Like you will stay in the seat until you're big enough to sit right with the, with, you know, the seatbelt. 
And it took me a while to finally ask him, why are you digging your heels in so much? Just to check. And I was wrong. He was like, the seat's uncomfortable. <laughs> so I said, okay, how about we get you a better one? And he said, okay, then. And that solved the problem. And then we got, we got the last year we needed in the seat without a problem. So sometimes we're waylaid by our own assumptions and by, you know, this close relationship. It can, it can be deceiving. And it is better to think through what else might be going on and then just ask. They'll tell you. Amy, did you have to negotiate at some point with your child or Lucy, you as well? Um, yeah, I'm like, have you been in my house this week? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I always find that giving giving choices helps. Like, if I can if I can have like two options that I'm okay with, especially for little kids who cannot fully articulate, um, that can be very helpful, especially when it comes to food. So if it's like this or this with your lunch, it can be a very easy choice. And then they feel like they've got power, which is always a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. I have a two-year-old, so we're definitely in the stage of lots of negotiations about all of the things. Um, but like, like you said, I at work have opportunities to negotiate and feel, I'd say, fairly confident in them. But I find myself being a lot more um, sympathetic to my son at home because I don't want, I don't want to hurt him or, you know, like even subconsciously, there's, you're, like you said, there's that just kind of, oh, I don't want to mess anything up or upset him when in reality, that's probably has to happen to some extent, right? Otherwise, he's going to completely uh, rule the house. So um, yeah, there, that I, I am right. I'm mentally making all of these notes because this is super interesting to me, especially with the toddler in the house. It's interesting. So, well, you, you all, I mean, sound like wonderful mothers. I'm, I'm envious of these children. I mean, back in my day, we, we didn't get a choice about anything. You got one choice, I think, on your birthday meal to pick out. So <laughs> it's not only a new modern approach to parenting, well, modern in terms of the past 20 years, but uh, I commend any parent out there that's, that's doing it any way they can. Terry, what is like one last solid piece of advice from your book that every parent should know uh, no matter what age? Is there a nugget of wisdom you can share upon us? I'm writing this down. <laughs> yes, and this is the same thing we tell straight through executive MBA level. The, the, the single most helpful idea is to reframe negotiations for yourself away from a battlefield metaphor where you just, everybody concedes until you finally, you know, last man standing gets the day to every time you have a difference of opinion, it's a chance to mutually solve a problem. Right. You are in this together. You are trying to figure something out that works for everybody. And that that mind sh mindset shift really uh, changes the way you'll approach negotiations and the way they'll respond to you. I love it. excellent, excellent help. All of your insights, everyone's is, is, is I'm, I'm going to apply this to my dog because sometimes I have to negotiate. <laughs> So uh, we're kind of like having a two-year-old. Um, I actually had a student one who, once who wrote a whole paper about negotiating with his dog, and it was an excellent paper. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and everyone watching, too, and joining this conversation online, if you have any tips to share or anything that works for you, uh, please add them in the comments. It takes a village, as they say, right? Okay, now let's move on to my favorite topic, food. Amy, thankfully you're here. Um, I understand you have a delicious pizza recipe to share with us. Um, would you mind taking us through the steps and telling us uh, why that works for you? Sure. So this is English muffin pizzas. Great for breakfast. Also great for breakfast for dinner, which is always a hit. You can make them for a whole family at once, or you can do one at a time, depending on who you're feeding. Um, I love that you can set out all the ingredients and have everyone assemble their own, or you can make a tray of them at once. So you want your um, English muffins to be toasted. You can toast them on a sheet pan in the oven altogether, or just do one at a time in the toaster. You can do the regular flavor, sourdough. I like cinnamon raisin. The sweetness with the savory is kind of a nice mix. I know it sounds a little bit um, unexpected, <laughs> but it's actually really good. So I've got some scrambled eggs here. We're just gonna top. If you want to add extra pizza flavor, you can put a layer of pizza sauce um, here, just, and that will instantly make it taste like pizza. You can also do fried eggs if you prefer fried eggs. Scrambled eggs are a little bit easier to make in a big, a big um, portion. 
And I'm going to put green onions on mine for a little kick. Kids may or may not like that, but you can sort of show them the toppings that you have and let them tell you what they want on theirs. And then I'm going to put some um, sun gold tomatoes, which these are from our garden. We have a ton of them right now and they're really sweet. And so my kids love eating these outside. So I'm going to put these on. And then I've got some pizza seasoning, which adds extra flavor. It's sort of like Italian seasoning with a little bit of Parmesan in there. And some crumbled crisp, crisp bacon. I mean, you can use whatever pizza toppings you like. If you want to go like pepperoni in the morning, <laughs> I mean, my kids would actually love it if I did pepperoni in the morning or olives. And then um, see if I'm going to make a big giant mess here. But you're going to top with cheese. This is Colby Jack cheese, just sort of nice with the rest of the ingredients. And then, or you can do like a spicy Sicilian Jack or a garlic one or plain mozzarella, whatever you're in the mood for. You can also do the minis for little kids, which are a really fun size. And then you're just gonna pop this in the oven or under the broiler to melt the cheese. If your eggs are super hot, your cheese will melt. And then you can just go to town and dive in. It, it's delicious. And I, I don't know about, uh, about Lucy and Terry, but I actually made it for breakfast this morning. And I have to tell you the Italian seasoning was one of my favorite touches that kind of made, elevated it a little bit. And I think, um, and I used the bacon. and. I might throw a little truffle cheese on here just to see what that does, but um, delicious, delicious. Did you guys have a chance to whip up something this morning for breakfast as well, Terry or Lucy? Yeah, I did this for everybody this morning. My 16-year-old daughter actually raises chickens in our backyard, so we have plenty of eggs. <laughs> so this is a fantastic idea for, for something that's a little bit novel. It's, it's nice as a dinner too because it's super quick and you can use whatever you've got in the fridge which is really nice for like the hectic back to school time yeah I actually uh warmed up I made eggs yesterday and warmed them up which is may not be everybody's favorite but in a crunch this morning it worked out nicely and then I'm so glad you mentioned I've been reaping the benefits of a friend of mine's garden because you guys are all ahead of the game I don't have a garden <laughs> So she's been bringing me fresh tomatoes because she has an excess. So I added fresh tomatoes and then some zucchini and squash with mm. some pepper jack to give it some spice too. So maybe a little less pizza-y, but still a good yummy breakfast. Plus then you maybe get some vegetables. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and anyone watching too, let us know your recipe tips and ideas or how you would whip them up. We'd love to hear and learn what, what you're craving these days. Um, Amy, I'm curious, you know, beautiful recipe. Um, do you have any um, tips for um, substituting anything? Like if someone had an allergy to eggs or a whole wheat, are there any like quick, quick hacks you go to in terms of substitutions for parents out there? Sure. If you can't do eggs, you can honestly make it with everything else. Um, if you need to, you can use a non-dairy cheese in place of the dairy cheese. I mean, there are so many on the market now that melt just like dairy cheeses. So I think you can customize it that way. Um, if you need to adjust for wheat, I mean, you could use zucchini if you have like me, like piles and piles of it. If you have like roasted zucchini slices or your, you know, a favorite gluten-free option. And this is actually a great question for both Amy and Terry and, and Lucy. Um, when your child is going over to like someone's house for a get together or a play date or vice versa, how can parents best navigate the conversation of food allergies um, when they're hosting kids or sending their kids over to someone's house? Any advice there when it comes to food specifically? I think, I think the more um, you can be proactive and just ask if there is anything that needs to be avoided um, or, and especially because if it's like a very serious one, usually the parent will tell you, but just as far as, Allergies are very common. Preferences are also very common. So I think just having that open dialogue about what the kids like, maybe say what you have on hand and you're planning to do. I mean, I tend to keep it very simple and just do like fruit and crackers. If we do have playdates or friends or simple granola bars um, I, or muffins, muffins are usually sort of universally appealing. And those are easy to adjust if there are any allergy concerns. And is it in terms of etiquette, is it up for the host parent to provide the alternative or should the child's parent that has the allergy or preference 
uh, send the child with it or send ahead the preferred meal. Um, is there is there a rule? Of, and I, I know this is just opinion. This is just conversation. It's different for everyone. But I would love to hear yours. Um, so uh, recently for a birthday party, I actually went through that experience where a parent told me the long list of things that their child couldn't have. And I was planning on having dinner outside with a cake. And I, you know, I had to decide, am I going to redo this whole menu that my nine-year-old specifically asked for? And I decided that that wasn't fair to the birthday kiddo. And instead I just said to the parent, can you bring something that your child can eat? And we will make sure that it's served in a safe way and we will all be together. And so it still felt festive, but it didn't. Um, and I'm sure that other people may have handled that differently, but that sort of felt like the right balance to me. And it was not a big deal, like remotely. Every All the kids were happy because everybody had cake, just some kids had different cake. And I would add one thing uh, on top of the, I, I think it's everyone's responsibility, right? The host parent should ask and the, the you know parent of the child with concerns, of course, should speak up. But I also think it's important, even from fairly young ages, not toddler, but you know once they get to grade school age, to help your kids to coach them in how to bring this stuff up themselves, right? Because they will need to be able to present themselves to the world in a way that's respectful, but still getting their needs met. And this, you know, circling back to the negotiations piece, this is part of what we're trying to model in the world with the way we negotiate with them is how can they turn around and negotiate with the world. Um, and this this kind of dynamic is a great example of that, right? There's never a reason to be disrespectful, but nor should you just swallow something and not say it. So helping them find the right words and practicing that can be really helpful for them. Well, Lucy, the back to school season is here and I'm glad we had that great conversation just now about allergies and, you know, Amy shared that delicious recipe with us. Um, so with the school season being here and households, well, they're just going to be a lot busier, right? Um, can you share with us a little bit why Wolferman's is a great solution and choice for back to school time? Um, you know, it's, it's a great alternative to an easy school snack breakfast or even dinner, as Amy just demonstrated and we talked about. So I would love to just hear more from you um, since you are the merchandising manager there. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, Wolferman's is known for our, for English muffins, which are great, but we do have a lot of other products um, that, uh, that are breakfast items that are super easy to prepare that are equally as great for whether it's a quick morning that you just need to warm something up and eat it and, and head out or an opportunity to have, um, you know, more of a sit down kind of, kind of more special occasion. So it's, it's cinnamon rolls that are just warmed up with some fresh icing or a, a, a raspberry scone, or um, even we even do some savory foods too. So you can get if you want more of that, sit down and don't want to cook. It's a matter of just kind of warming it up and prepping it beforehand so that you can all gather and not have to worry about the cooking part of it. But I just love the idea of, of being able to make back to school kind of an occasion, whether it's your homeschooling or you're sending kids off to elementary or high school, or um, even like for myself, just for preschool of just kind of having a moment to sit down with, uh, with kids and family and just kind of making it a special time for them. Like I said, obviously I'm very sentimental. So spending time with my family is uh, before school was a very special thing. So making it a positive experience for them before they embark on this new year with a breakfast. I, I just love the idea of whether it's a, a full recipe like this or just an opportunity to gather around the table and have a warm English muffin with some some uh, preserve on it. So I think that there's a lot of opportunities to, to make breakfast a special part of that day and that kind of routine. Like Amy said, it, it became a tradition for them. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities where Wolferman specifically can help fill those, those traditions for sure. I agree completely. I mean, Wolferman's to me has been the leader when it comes to breakfast. And what I love also is it's so giftable too. You could also send a, a friend or a family member a back to school, you know, surprise to, to help them get started on that first week. These days we all need to spread a little sunshine. Um, and I love breakfast just like anyone else. It's such a ceremonial time of day and it's that one 
that one pause where you can share a conversation and something delicious. So we want to share something delicious with you watching. As mentioned, we have some giveaway news to share. So I'm about to spill the details. Reply and like the comment by Wolfermans, which will be pinned at the top of the comment section on this event video once I ask it. Okay, guys? So I'm going to ask the question and you're going to reply and like to the comment. Here we go. The question is, what was your favorite after school snack? So write in the comments there. Make sure to like. Wolfermans is going to pin it right about now up there. Um, and in order to be entered correctly, please answer the question and also add in hashtag back to school and hashtag sweepstakes in your reply for a, to enter for a chance to win this classic bread box gift and a $75 Wolfermans gift card. Remember, you also have gift and a, the same pinned comment from the Wolfermans uh, account there to, uh, to accept the giveaway rules. The comment will include the question as well as a link to the rules and details. So make sure to check that out as well. Once again, the prize is this classic, beautiful, bread box gift set and a $75 Wolfermans gift card. And if that isn't fantastic enough, they're selecting three lucky winners. So that's right, three lucky winners will be chosen a week starting from today, August 25th, 2021. So that means on Wednesday, September 1st at 8 a.m. Pacific time, 2021, the winners will be announced in the comments section below. Well, our thanks to Amy, Lucy, and Terry, and all of you for spending time together over breakfast and sharing in this morning's back to school conversation, which was so helpful and important and got me even excited. Uh, so please visit wilfermans.com for products and recipe ideas and make sure to watch out for our next episode geared towards morning routines and taking time for yourself, which we'll all need. So um, guys, should we raise our mugs? Amy, Lucy, and Terry, let's raise our mugs for a little cheers and a happy back to school season, everyone. Take care of yourself and make sure to take care of each other. Bye-bye.